Hello and welcome to the Voices of Pueblo, brought to you by the Pueblo Star Journal. We're a monthly newspaper here in Pueblo, Colorado. We're looking for sponsors. If you want to help us in our mission to bring hyper-local news coverage to Pueblo, please reach out to us at sales at pueblostarjournal.org. Let's get into the episode. Hello and welcome to the Voices of Pueblo podcast. I am Ben Kaysen here with Coach John Riston, CSU Pueblo. I just retired. <laughs> I'm incredibly honored to have you on the podcast, Coach. Thank you so much for coming. Wow, it's, uh, you know, retired from the coaching, but I'm going to be involved in the university and that's right. doing a lot of different things and still be around uh, our players here and, mm-hmm. and helping students is uh, still a passion of mine right now. And yeah. um, I'm just going to do it in a different way. For sure. Amazing. I'm so glad that you get to stay around the program and do that. And, you know, you've had such a critical role in pointing our program where it needs to be. So I'm really excited that you're still going to be here doing that. And I'm excited today. We're just going to kind of reminisce a little bit about your career and talk about, you know, where the program has come from and where it's going and a little bit about new coach and some of the new things that you guys are doing. So, uh, yeah, you ready to get into it? I, I can't wait. And again, thank you for uh, let, let me be on on this podcast. Man. Absolutely. I, it's, it's an honor. So uh, I just kind of want to start off with uh, you were a integral part of the restart of the program. So that's 2007, 2008. I'd kind of like to start the story there if we could. When did it first come into your mind of, hey, I'm going to go to Pueblo and have this job? What did that look like? Well, it, it was kind of funny. Um I'm coaching out at UCLA and um, special teams coordinator and have a pretty good gig out there. And, yeah. and uh, the, um, the rumors started flying around that uh, they we're going to bring football back. And, mm. and I say USC, that that time was University of Southern Colorado as a graduate. And, yeah. and uh, so I, I, I followed a little bit, but I, I was at a point in my career where I go, you know, I, I think um, – I've done this division one thing for a while and, and, uh, I'm, I'm, I want to try to be a head coach and what a better way to do that, to be here in Pueblo, Colorado and do it at Colorado State University Pueblo. And, um, I, I was really thinking, uh, I, I would hope I get a, a chance. I would hope yeah. I would get a chance to go, uh, interview and, and, uh, be a part of something special. So fast forward, uh, um, Resigned from my job at uh, UCLA. The coach at that time was Carl Durrell, who just was, who prime time just replaced at CU. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, he goes, well, you better get that job down in Pueblo. And I said, well, I'm, mm. I'm going to try to get it. He says, well, you better resign before you go interview because it was late. Interesting. So I uh, felt like there was a little pressure on me to go get it done and felt like my back was against the wall. And mm. But uh, I also felt a lot of excitement about building from scratch. So Hmm. I get a call from uh, uh, Joe Fuller, the AD at that time, and Joe Garcia was our president, and they offered me the job. And Hmm. I I jumped at it, and and I thought – it was uh, one heck of an opportunity to to start something from scratch because in in education and coaching, you never get to start anything from scratch. Absolutely. And I – um, I remember looking myself in the mirror and says, hey, big boy, you only have one guy to blame, and that's the guy looking back at you. <laughs> so you, you better step up and figure it out and how to go. And so, mm. you know, that that was, uh, Ben, it, it was an unbelievable experience about where do you start? How yeah. do you start? And uh, I, I just remember that we had no footballs. I really didn't have an office on campus. We had no field. <laughs> we had no helmets. We, and, and I was hired July 3rd hmm. of, of 2007. And so, and I, I, I remember on our press, con- my press conference that I go, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? And I think it was the shortest press conference around. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's over a hundred people there be a part of it. And I, I, I just, uh, it says it's going to be short and simple and we're going to go to work and hmm. have a team that everybody's proud of and being able to move forward. And and uh, now fast forward to uh, 2023, here we are. Absolutely. What was, what was it about this job and this place that pulled you back? Well, I, I think um, I'm a Colorado native and uh, my parents still live here in Pueblo, Colorado. Hmm. And... Uh, 
uh, I'm a graduate of this school, so why not? Mm. I wanted this experience. I I enjoy living in Pueblo, Colorado. I absolutely think it's a gem, and um, I I wanted to make the most of it, and and lucky enough to, in in my mind when I started, my my mindset was this is going to be my last job. Yeah, and um, I and you know, hopefully it is my last job. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. You're getting the program started. I'm a huge football nerd, so I'm, I had, I'm just wanted to ask you this for a while. What were those first steps like? Like, how did you decide which people to bring alongside you? How did you just set the vision? Um, what what did that look like? Well, I I, I knew um, it looked like clear as mud. Okay, that's what yeah. it looked like. And so, <laughs> but the reality, I, I needed to hire some staff that wanted to coach and start something from the bottom line up and had some young, young guys that wanted to go to work and roll up their sleeves and yeah. adapt to a vision. And, and so, um, I had to hire coaches. I had to, um, the, the school's only going to give me two coaches at that time. And I really? said, you guys don't understand. Yeah. And so how many I, were at UCLA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I was having a recruiting event where I think we had a hundred people in the old ballroom Mm-hmm. And I was going from table to table and Russ Meyer, the provost at the time, he walked by and saw what was going on and goes, we need to get the guy some help. And so I was able to get two more coaches. And okay. one of the first uh, coaches I, I was able to hire was Hunter Hughes. Hmm. And Hunter um, w- was a bulldog. He went to work. He was passionate, really a great recruiter, great football coach. And then uh, um, I was a- able to bring a mixture of guys along with that as we grew. But um, I hired a guy named Sam Sewell. Uh, or in uh, uh, Steve Sewell, excuse me, Sam's a son that came a little bit later, but Steve uh, was a former Bronco, was a great player with the Broncos, and he wanted to come down and be a part of it, and and uh, and so we 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 just kind of. Be- Jigsaw puzzle it together, and I don't know if we knew the pieces. Hmm. I don't know if we saw the edges. You know, there you put a puzzle together and yep. try to help you with the edge. I don't know if we we knew that, but we kept working towards what that vision looks like, and we hmm. wanted to make sure that we brought um, quality student athletes that wanted to get their degree. Hmm that wanted to um, go compete at a high level, both on and off the field, yeah. and then uh, really go and enjoy it. And so we sold them on uh, that opportunity. And we we told them that if they wanted to stay and, and compete at a high level, we're going to go win a national championship. Hmm. And that's before we even had a stadium. Yeah, that was where early. all the yucca and cactus and lizards and snakes <laughs> were all well, where the Thunder Bowl was and hmm. Pac House. So, um, you know, that that took a lot for those kids to buy into that. And that's what I really appreciate is our our original group of um, team, our members of our team to buy into that vision to be able to lay that foundation. Wow. Yeah. So you come into the first year that was Oklahoma Oklahoma Panhandle State in the first game. Um, What was going through your head before that first game? Well, there, there, I have to tell a funny story. Is that I, I'm, uh, you, you know, you normally you eat four hours before game. You're doing all that. I, well, I I can't sleep. Um, and I'm, I'm I've been fortunate to coach at a lot of big games before this, but I I can't sleep before this one. <laughs> and um, talk about pressure. But I'm sitting in my office and I'm looking out my window. And I'm looking down, and I see on uh, the seaman, it looks like a big stick up there. Hmm. And it, then I talk to Coach Folda. He's asking, you know, are we okay? We're going to be all right. We're going to embarrass ourselves. You know, he's asking. <laughs> but then out of the corner of my eye, I see this this stick start moving. So it's a big old snake. Hmm. And uh, so um, – before our first game, we killed a uh, probably six foot rattlesnake as we come down there. And when I was cleaning out my office the other day, I found those rattler the, oh, the, the, the cool. rattles on there, so I was able to keep that. So not only did we <laughs> we able to to try to pro, put on a product out there that everybody would be proud of, and I knew there'd be ten thousand fans there. Yeah, there'd be fire works and we were fish we were the worst team in America 
you know, starting out. <laughs> we were the worst team in America to be able to get that done. But our kids played hard, hmm. and they gave it everything they they, they could. And uh, we found a way to win that first game. And so I, I thought that was probably one of the most impressive victories that we've ever had. What was the community response to that first game? Oh, it, it was outstanding. I got a picture in my office it's, it, that we scored our first touchdown, and, and mm-hmm. you can see the whole stands were filled, and all, all you see is the armpits in there, and everybody <laughs> raising it, getting excited, and it was loud. It mm-hmm. was really neat to be able to uh, perform that and, and give everybody a, a, a picture of what pack football was going to be. Mm-hmm. And that's awesome. So, obviously, so that's 2008. Now you guys are kind of on your way up as a program. Your first RMAC title comes in 2011. What was the building process like from that first game all the way up to that 2011 team? What was that like? You know, I I, I want to say I had a secret formula. <laughs> well, I want to say I want to say I had some secret sauce to it, but yeah. what it was like was being able to um, find enough really good players that wanted to check their egos at the door Mm. and wanted to roll up their sleeves and really out hustle, out hit, and then really make sure they had some fun doing it. Mm. And so I wanted to establish that right away. And, um, I, I think we found a bunch of blue collar kids that mm-hmm. wanted to do that. We found a coaching staff that was able to mix together. And my my first five years, I didn't have to replace a coach. Mm-hmm. And when you have that um, the consistency that you can do all that stuff, then then it, a lot of great things can happen. And our kids stayed with it. They they had a uh, mindset that they weren't going to lose. I thought our kids thought they couldn't. You know, they were going to go beat the Green Bay Packers, which was mm-hmm. wonderful. And so. I I don't think there is a secret sauce. And I try to establish by two things, your attitude and work ethic. And those are the two things you have control over. And I kept emphasizing and the kids bought it, bought in. And then our core values of trust, faith, and patience. And we had to understand the the trust and the plan and you had to buy in and Really, the faith is belief without evidence. You got to really believe in that trust. Yeah. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. And then, yeah, as all with anybody, they, uh, I said the patience is the key. Hmm. You got to be able to not um, hit the reset button on the PlayStation or Xbox or whatever it is anymore, because you got to really value uh, going to work. And because mm-hmm. anything that worth, is worth value in this life, you got to go to work. It doesn't come easy. And so that's kind of what we establish and, and uh, find enough good players and we're able to recruit those type of guys. And we, I was very lucky to be surrounded by a bunch of great coaches and a bunch of great kids that wanted to be able to go and establish what it meant to have uh, their tradition of pack football. Hmm. Do you remember like a moment in your head where, okay, it seems like the RMAC is starting to respect us as a program. Like we're not the new kids anymore. I I don't know if there's one moment, but I I do. um, We lost to, um, I think it was in 2010, I believe we finished nine and two. Hmm. And we should have been 10 and one. We really had minds beat. We stopped him on a fourth down, and they called um, our young freshman corner, Steph Dickens, off sides. You never call a corner <laughs> off sides or on a slot that he's off sure. So they called that, hmm. and then they gave him another down, and they, wow. s- they scored, or else we're making the playoffs then. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I remember that, that moment is where our kids feeling that hurt. Hmm us feeling that hurt. And I think being able to establish what that that hurt felt like and how hard and how um, you got to pay attention to the discipline of the details to be great, help establish as we move forward. Hmm. That's amazing. What and, and there's one other game I remember that we went to uh, Kearney, Nebraska. Yeah. And, uh, and now I'm remembering another game, but uh, we'll talk yeah, about great. the Kearney, Nebraska game where yeah. they just used to 
beat us around. I mean, just pick us up and slap us and throw us down and do that. Well, we, we went there. They had a really good team, and I think they were ranked 13th in the country and found a way to go up there. And we, we just played with great passion and fun. And, mm. and uh, it, it was it was <laughs> our bus broke down on the way there. We have faced a lot of obstacles and, mm. you know, you could have used a lot of excuse, but we found a way. And then our, in, in 2009, it was probably our first big victory. It was versus Chattern state. So in yeah. 2007 in my press conference, I do remember saying this, uh, we're going after Chattern because mm. Chattern was the big boys on the block. And they, they had a big win streak. At they that had time. a big winning yep. streak, the whole bit. And we went up there and beat them. And I remember handing everybody t-shirts about, uh, why not us? Mm. And I had two twelve on it. And, um, if you know, at, at 210 degrees and 211, it's just hot water. Hmm. And then at 212 degrees, it, it's steam and steam can move a locomotive through the mountains. It can do a lot of different things. And it takes one more shovel of the coal to, to get that steam hot. Hmm. And so we went up there and uh, I remember uh, Eddie DeRose and uh, Sal Elizondo and um, uh, Danny DeRose and everybody, they all went to the game and hmm. it was just as loud and and for 25 people, it was for 25,000 for us. <laughs> and it was great. And after the game, it was a hot day. Uh, I remember Eddie come by, come back, and he gave me a hug on the uh, right on the 50-yard line. And he's in tears, and he's excited. And, and uh, he goes, you did it. You did it. And I go, we just started. Mm. And he goes, that's the way to go, John. That's the way to go. And I just remember that to the, the, the passion that he had to be able to do that. And so uh, those moments are, are what I, I remember more than the national championship, more than a lot of those other things that went on. Because those are the things that no one really said you could ever do. Mm. And uh, we, it, it was fun uh, putting that puzzle together that way. Mm. That's cool. And, you know, I think for me, I came in at CSU Pueblo in 2017 was when I started covering the team. At that point, y'all were kind of the the bullies of the RMAC already and had already had that, you know, these guys have already won a national championship. These guys have all this respect. I just know that Pueblo's got this interesting thing where a lot of our region doesn't respect us as a city. So I thought that was a really cool thing to kind of read through about how you guys kind of built that. I don't know. I, I would almost go so far to say fear of your program from the other schools here in this uh in this side of the country. So, well, I, uh, that's what you want. Yeah. That's what you want. Yeah. That's what, uh, I, I don't know if the fear of the, our program or not, but they, they knew when they, they got down playing with this, they, they knew they were going to be in a physical com combative hmm. and, uh, and, um, we, we wanted to make sure men, men, our mentality was that hmm. we wanted to dominate, hmm. not just survive, but to dominate. Hey everyone, Ben Kaysen here. If you're enjoying this podcast, we have a new podcast right here on the Pueblo Star Journal called Pueblo Star Sports, where we'll be interviewing other Pueblo sports figures, players, as well as me and Brandon Samora breaking down the games. If you want to check out that podcast, look out Pueblo Star Sports in your podcast platform. Let's jump back into the interview. So in 2011, you guys have, you're in the playoffs, big breakthrough season. Um, you've been building up to it. Talk to me about how did you keep your guys from being complacent? Well, I I, I, th I think complacency means entitlement, hmm. and uh, I try to stress from day one in our off season. That's what you do now. You're not entitled to anything. You're not hmm. entitled to any growth. You're not entitled to anything but rolling up your sleeves and going to work and be a part of this program. And if you don't want to work, you don't want to be a part of it. Well, don't waste my time or your time. Hmm. And so we we address that. Um, er, Every day is your resume. Everything you do is your resume. What does that look like to you? Yeah. What What do you want when your name's on it? And then um, establish, again, the, your attitude and work ethic are the two things. And so um, I think we, we had a very hungry group there that um, – wasn't just satisfied in 2011 and getting the playoffs. I believe we uh, we lost to Minnesota Duluth, our first playoff game, and um, they were defending national champs. Hmm. And I believe it was a 
28, 24 ball game or something like that. It was really a Real close. It was a close ball game, and it, it was it was great seeing a, the the fans and us hosting a playoff game, and yeah, um, it, it was really kind of cool. Hmm. That's really cool. So, yeah, you guys, you you get that win. Now you get into twenty twelve. You guys are starting to win now. You know the program's getting a lot of respect. Ranked number one at some points during that. Tell me the story of the 2014 team. How do we get from that to where you guys ended up in 2014? Well, I uh, I, I think the way in 2014 um, really had to have a lot of things happen to you. When you mm. when you win a national championship, you got to have a lot of luck, mm. and you got to have a lot of luck go your way. And and one one of those things that I think happened on our 14 team is our, our schedule was right hmm. and our playoff matchups were right hmm. for us. And so it's not so much about getting in the playoffs and advancing. It's about who you play in the playoffs and the hmm. matchups. And our matchups were right. We, um, we, we were going to play at Angelo State and uh, – we had played them a, a year before and kind of whipped up on them in Texas. Yeah, in Jerry's world there, and uh, and so I, I I knew our kids would would be fired up to play them at our place, and and uh, we we end up beating beating them pretty good. I believe fifty to nothing or something of that sort. And then yeah. we played o- Ohio Dominican the next game and mm. jumped out to an early lead and kind of held on, and. Um, we tur- I remember Daniel Weiss to return in a punt, yeah. eighty yards or whatever to seal the win, and yeah. so that that was, um, and y- you know, we we could play with those teams and we not be a physical matchup like some teams might be. Yeah. So then we played uh, West Georgia in the semifinal game, which was a special game here in Pueblo, Colorado, mm-hmm. and uh, that was. Uh, a bunch of Southeast Conference transfers, and mm-hmm. that was a flat-out war with uh, kids just landing on the line and going to work, and mm-hmm. and it was fun to see. And we found a way to score one more point, found a way to get it to 10-7 to 7 on a trick play to Zach Boyd, and uh, uh, that put us in the national ch- I, I knew if we won – our semifinal game, we would win the national championship. Mm. I just had, because I, I had played that scenario in my mind 10,000 times. Mm. And I just, in my mind, I knew we were going to go win that national championship game, no matter who we played. Mm. I knew we needed to get there. Yeah, That was the key. And so uh, we got there and it was because of the matchup. And then 14, uh, we lost to Fort Lewis, I think, middle of the season. And that kind of refocused it. We also beat a really good Sam Houston team down in Texas at mm. their place. They were ranked number one or number two in the uh, F- FCS uh, football championship series, and and so we we had a damn good team. We had damn good coaches that uh, put them in a great position, and and um, but uh, there was there were some ebbs and flows of that. Sure. And but the, really, the bottom line is, I think the fourteen team, we got lucky. And it's okay to say that. Yeah. I think it's okay to manage it. We took advantage of that. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I think that's the key to anything in life is did you take advantage of that opportunity? And we did. Hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. So y'all get to the national championship game. What's going through your mind before you step out on the field against Minnesota State Mankato? Oh, I, I just didn't want to trip. <laughs> I didn't want to trip coming out, leading the team out and trying to do that. I I thought we... Uh, I, I just am, again, I, I didn't want to screw that game up for our kids. Mm. <laughs> and uh, I I really, again, I, I felt like no matter who we're going to play, we're going to beat them. Mm. And um, I, I just think I was just so confident with, because I, again, I like I said before, I, I played that game. 10,000 times in my head and we won it every time. And, um, I think our kids had thought that way. I think that, uh, our, our kids took advantage of everything they, they could do and I wanted them to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. And, and so I, I, I think that I, and then I, the last part that I wanted to enjoy it 
Hmm. I really wanted it, the kids to enjoy it. And so I try to stress all week, take a moment to enjoy it. Hmm. And because this will go, go down to being a special moment for all of us. Hmm. Wow. And so in that game, do you remember the moment where it sealed in, we're going to win this game? Well, I, I, you know, <laughs> again, I, I, I think that, uh, the way our defense was playing hmm. and playing fast and, uh, Chris Bonner threw a ball down to Paul Browning that yeah. made a heck of a play. And, and, uh, it was nice to have him healthy. I remember our offensive line was a little bit inexperienced, but they came to play and we're knocking them off. I remember, uh, Troy Thompson from Pueblo Central that made a heck of a catch. And, and, and but I remember Cam, Cameron McDonald just kind of, I'm, I'm going to make sure I get a 33, a 34. And we weren't going to have a lot of big yards, but he's going to find a way to get it done. And hmm. we controlled the ball game that way. And Gerard Lacey and Steph Dickens, um, uh, uh, Josh Bridal blocked a field goal and Steph Dickens picked it up and advanced it. And so mm-hmm. there was, there was a lot of great moments. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking at the opening kickoff, I was so confident we were going to win the ball game. Wow. How, how about that? <laughs> That's so amazing. I, I don't, I don't remember one special moment that we got this. Yeah. I just felt like we got it from got the, the whole game. The whole game. Wow. <laughs> so you guys win that championship. You know, you're celebrating the championship with the guys at the end of the at the end of the game. Everyone's running around. It's it's a madhouse. What do you remember about being in that locker room after the game? Well, it was funny. They had us in two different locker rooms, so it was oh, really? hard to get everybody together. Hmm. But I I just remember afterwards. You know, they present the trophy. They got a um, stage they bring out and then confetti's all doing it. But I remember our guys doing, uh, snow angels in the confetti and doing, <laughs> doing that. But I, I, I just remember for myself, I was just going to stand back and watch them hmm. and enjoy it and, uh, have them take it all in. And just the, the smile on those kids faces hmm. was special. Hmm. Wow. That's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, like when we talk about that team as well, like uh, what was it like to be with those assistant coaches and the guys that you'd been around and celebrate that championship coach to coach? Well, you know, we we all have goals. We all have aspirations, but we were able to take it from zero to 100. Mm. And there's not a lot of times in your lifetime that you ever get to do that. And I think that was very, very uh, fulfilling. It was very humbling. It was very... um, it, it, it was just humiliating in the sense that we did it. Hmm. And uh, the value of um, developing the human spirit, getting them all on the same page with your coaches and everything. Hmm. And there's, you just can't replace that. Hmm. Amen. That's so cool. It is. So I'm going to give you a chance. I don't want to put you on the spot too much, but who are some of the players from those 2010s teams or maybe just all the way through your run that stand out to you as incredibly important to the Thunderwolves and the brand that's come up out of that? Oh, you're putting me on the spot here with a <laughs> lot. I, I think uh, all those kids that uh, that stayed that first year to graduation, you mm-hmm. know, the Kobe Wittick's of the world, the JT Haddams of the world, the... Uh, um, the uh, Aaron Hernandez of the mm-hmm. world, uh, Lee Lee Meiser. I think I've said that, but uh, all those guys that that stayed with us from day one all the way through, and and uh, um, I, I think that those guys really helped the Kobe Wittics, the uh, golly, uh, the John Bailey's of the world, uh, mm-hmm. that helped establish to bring in the, the Gerard Lacey's, the, uh, CJ Roberts, the Steph Dickens, the Cam, the McDonald brothers, the mm-hmm. Chris Bonner, the Kevin Cuffs, the, um, Kieran Duncan's, Jared Radenbaugh's, the, the Tony Campton's of the world. Uh, mm-hmm. there's so many, that it, I'm not doing it justice because I'm a Linux, but Absolutely. just everybody all together that wanted to be a part of it. And, and I, I thank them for letting me be a part of their life and let me coach them. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's talk about that side of it. Like you've gotten a chance to be really close with a lot of guys over these years and be able to have a really good influence on them. Um, 
what's it been like to to be in that position in these young men's lives? Well, I, I that's what I do. What I why I do what I do. Hmm. And uh, it was funny when uh, official announcement of the my retirement coach and my I think I had two hundred forty five texts. Wow, and I had over twenty phone calls from majority players, former players. And so that was, that was great. Hmm. It was really cool. It was really uh, humbling. And, uh, and all of it was thank you. Hmm. And uh, so I I get emotional on that because it it, uh, is, uh, I I guess that's what stirs the soul. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, they they uh, felt enough to validate and say thank you. So hmm. that, that meant a lot. Hmm. Wow. Man, that's so cool. So you had an interesting kind of tough challenge that came up in 2020 that most coaches as well around the world had to deal with. But yeah. when it comes to influencing young men's lives and being that guy for them, what was it like being a coach during the COVID pandemic? I don't know if I did. Hmm. Tell you the truth, because it's different. I, yeah. I don't. I don't know if you can touch souls through Zoom. I don't know sure. if you can not do it looking a guy in the eye. I don't think you can do it without rolling your sleeves and going to work. And and that was taken away from us. And just like a lot of programs, but it it, it was very difficult. And uh, I think our program slipped a little bit because of that. Hmm. And. Uh, I, I think it it made me evaluate a little bit of what where we're going and and I think it it really led to maybe me making this type of decision right here and and uh, I, uh, I I think that COVID had a lot to do of reflection hmm. and whether I could do the job the way it needed to do be done to carry on the the tradition and and how much respect I have for it. So uh, COVID really screwed me up hmm. and from a mentality standpoint. And so um, to your question, I, I, I think I did a, a, a crappy job. Hmm. Well, I think I've heard some stories from, players who've been in your your program during that, that would would say the opposite as well, just to encourage you. I think everyone, everyone was trying to figure out, you know, what to do during that, but yeah, 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 it's, uh, I can't even imagine just to, just to, (laughs) well, it it, it was just so different, you know, that it's so different in a standpoint that you, uh, you can't hold them accountable per se. Hmm. Except on one Zoom call, you, and, sure, and being able to do the different things, but I, 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 I it was hard for me to know that because uh, you lost that personal contact, and whether the kids realized that you cared enough about them, hmm. and and yeah. and that's what I see our role being to do. But uh, it, it it was it was challenging. Hmm. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I mean, you mentioned in that the. Uh, the standard of being a Thunderwolf that you wanted to keep going. Uh, what is that for people who aren't here in Pueblo and don't know the program very well? What, what is that that you're trying to keep going? Well, I, I, I think it's always doing your best hmm. and never let adversity stop you hmm. and uh, be stronger than your strongest excuse and hmm. making sure that you can um, grind and that you go to work and you put your head down. And if it's good enough, it's good enough. Hmm. Um, cause that will lead to victories. But if you think victories are going to just happen, it's not, you got to hmm. make sure that you enjoy this process and then do it, do it. So you have a little fun. Hmm. And I, uh, you know, the way we, we spell, uh, fun around here is W I N. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, I want, want them to go win the day at everything they do. I want them to go be a leaders in their classroom. I want them to change our society. Hmm. Um, and I, I want them to care about other people. Hmm. And, uh, if we, we can do those things, then I think we've accomplished something. Hmm. That's amazing. So, I've heard you talk about it before. I just just want to give you a chance if you'd like to. Um, Coach Donnell Liamidi was a big part of this program for a long time. I wanted to just ask you, what was his impact on the Thunderwolves and on you? Well, he was a true warrior. Hmm. He was a Buffalo soldier. And so one of those things um, that a guy that had such a spirit to him, Hmm. and he was a kid 
a guy, a husband, a man that really um, was the epitome of not letting your being stronger than your strongest excuse, as I talked about. Mm. I mean, he could have, he was, there was many times after the game, he'd go to the hospital, be at mm. work Sunday morning. Uh, he was taking chemo and calling a defensive game mm. when we played Mesa. Uh, he, uh, I remember his wife comes stomping down on the field, and I give her a bad time about this, but stomping <laughs> and says, he's got to go now. We got to get him to Anschutz. We got to get him up there right away. And so hmm. um, he, he was just a true warrior with the heart of gold and hmm. the spirit. And kids loved him. He's still leaving his trademark on there. And so um, I, I couldn't ask for a better colleague couldn't ask for a better coach, hmm. but I couldn't ask for a better man to exemplify what it meant to be a warrior and go compete on a daily basis. And that's what who Donnell Lee Media is. Hmm. That's amazing. Thank you, coach. I appreciate that. Thank you. Talk about that. Yeah. So the Thunderwolves became and very much are a huge part of Pueblo's sports scene. So talk to me a little bit about how has Pueblo as a community embraced you, embraced the Thunderwolves over these years? Well, I, I think that uh, we made Saturday afternoons in the fall an event, <laughs> Pueblo's event oriented town. Uh, they come out for special things. And uh, we have developed uh, a, a great passion for representing the city of Pueblo. And it just happens to be CSU Pueblo that represents that. <laughs> we made um, it a chance for the city to come out on the hill per se. Yeah. And, uh, we made an event for the tailgaters and, and the people that want to enjoy a Saturday afternoon. And so, uh, I, I've been entrenched in Pueblo, Colorado. I love the people of Pueblo, Colorado. I value, uh, what it stands for. And, uh, I'm, I'm lucky to be a citizen here in this city and I'm going to continue to represent that. Hmm. And, uh, I, I know coach Hill and the rest of the staff are going to take on, uh, the shield and, 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 and and make it shinier and carry it on better than it's ever been before. Hmm. I want to take a second as well to just say thank you for me because when I when I was trying to decide which college to go to, I wanted to do sports broadcasting really badly. That was a big thing for me. So I grew up in Rye. I would come up here to y'all's games. <laughs> I was a big, big Thunderwolf fan. And I was trying to figure out, you know, where could I get an opportunity to, you know, cover sports and cover a team that is actually, you know, worth covering. And um, yeah, I, I honestly think your program was a big reason why I chose this university and stayed in town. And I, I'm super thankful for you for that. So, well, thank you. I appreciate you making a, the right choice and the smart choice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Glad I did too. Yeah. What, what's so special about this university itself? Well, I, I, I do think that, uh, what, what I, I, I try to tell people that, um, you're going to get a great four-year degree. Hmm. When you walk out of here, it's going to say CSU Pueblo. And when you walk out of Fort Collins, it's going to say CSU Fort Collins. Hmm. And you're going to be walking out with a credit degree and going to be challenged. And so that that's what you want. But the key to this is that you're, um, a, you're a name, not a number. Hmm. And people are going to invest in names and not number. And um, it's just like investing. If you want to put a penny a day and have a great compound effect, you're going to gain, gain a lot out of it. Hmm. Education, you got to go invest. And there's people in here ready to invest in you. And so when you walk out of here, you're going to walk out with a degree that you're going to be able to go compete for the next 40 years. And that's the most important part of it. Hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. So now I'll just give you a chance for, I haven't met coach V Hill yet. Um, a lot of Pueblo hasn't yet as he's just getting set up for this next year coming up. What can you tell us about him? Why are you excited about him taking the mantle of the program? Well, I, I think Phil is a, uh, up and coming uh, rock star in this business. Mm. I think that every time I had a phone conversation with them, uh, I hung up and go, this kid's got it. Hmm. This kid's impressive. This kid's um, got something to him. And so um, I, I think that uh, Phil's going to do it his way, which hmm. he sh has every right and should do it, not 
follow what I did or anything because that's not the right way because you got to be Phil Vigil, not John Riston. Hmm. And so um, he's got enough moxie in his neck. He's got enough resolve to figure it out. And he's humbled. And um, I, I, I think that uh, he's going to put a great spin on. He's got a great young staff, and uh, they're going to take these these thing, this team, and this program to heights it hasn't seen. Hmm. And tell us about your role. Well, I, I, I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my role is to yell at officials. Still, no. Hey, that's great. Uh, <laughs> no one. No, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to external affairs. Um, with our athletic department in our university. And I'm going to be a jack of all trades, master of none, and mm-hmm. to continue to develop relationships and help uh, our, our university grow. And I uh, appreciate the university making this thing happen for me. And mm-hmm. and um, our, and um, I'm looking forward to creating value with uh, relationships and, and making this a, a better university with, with my role, what, what I have to do. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. Well, I'm really glad that you're sticking around and getting to do that. And yeah, I'm really happy about that. So. Yeah, so, so am I. It's a little awkward sometimes with what, what should I do with football and not do and you know sure. when, when you walk away but we'll we'll figure that out and i yeah. i want to give phil and his program uh uh all all the space they they deserve and need that's good that's awesome well coach thank you so much for coming on i really really appreciate it yeah i i i value uh you and value your heart and i value uh you, what we're trying to do for Pueblo, colorado mm-hmm. and and uh, again if there's any, anything i i can do uh, believe me, I've screwed up a lot more things than I've made right. So you, you better be careful about that. But I- anyway, I, I appreciate you, Ben, and thank you, and uh, go Pack. Go Pack. Thank you, Coach. I really appreciate it. Uh, this has been brought to you by the Pueblo Star Journal, this podcast. We're going to be covering CSU Pueblo sports over this next year and further on. So like Coach was talking about, those Saturday events up on the hill, CSU Pueblo getting to play, we will be where you want to go for coverage on that team. Uh, Coach, thank you so much for spending the time with me. And uh, yeah, go Pack. I appreciate it. And again, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. If you like the podcast, please go give us a rating, give us a like, give us a subscribe right here on your podcast platform. Additionally, we have a new podcast coming out called Pueblo Star Sports. You can find that by searching Pueblo Star Sports in your podcast platform. Also, we're looking for new music for the intro and outro. If you're a local producer or singer, please compose something and send it to us at sales at PuebloStarJournal.org. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.